Thank you so much. Um, so uh, my name is Sadiq. I'm an academic in the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Cape Town. And I'm joined by my colleague, uh, David Wallace from the School of Information at the University of Michigan. So uh, in this presentation, uh, we will discuss our collaboration since 2018 to enhance social memory through joining primary sources with emerging information technology tools in District 6 in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, with emphasis on our latest efforts to integrate AR, uh, that's uh, Augmented Reality, uh, Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, uh, Archives, and Storytelling. Uh, this work is based on uh, a decolonial practice related to our scholarship in social justice, in geomatics education, and in engineering education, that's my work, and uh, archival social justice, that's David's work. And uh, our work has proceeded along three axes. Um, number one, which is a theoretical axis, which is joining counter-surveying and social justice archiving to examine ephemerality, affect, and memory making. Number two, uh, methodological axis, uh, which is the development of counter-serving, memory-making, and transmission practice. And number three, uh, socio-technical access, which is the incorporation of information and communication technologies to document District 6. We see prospect for application of this work to other contexts of force removal, recovered and contested memory, and ongoing justice-seeking and activist efforts, like through acknowledgement, memorial uh, memorialization, restitution and, re and reparations. So a little bit about District 6. Uh, District 6 is in Cape Town, where I'm at at the moment, uh, and it's perhaps the most well-known site of apartheid forced removals. Some 60,000 black, black individuals were violently moved from District 6 to distant areas around Cape Town between 1968 and the, and the mid-1980s. District 6 was a cosmopolitan, multiracial, and multi-denomination denominational urban community that was favorably located, uh, located close to the city center, nestled in between Table Mountain and the sea. The red outline in this picture uh, is a, it's an oblique view of Cape Town and it shows the loca location of District 6. What follows is a set of aerial imagery over time showing its destruction. So here's my first map of, of District 6 from 1945. In 1948, the racist Africana National Party came into power and started implementing its policy of apartheid. The destruction of District 6 was being planned around this time. You can see that District 6 was fully built, uh, as well as in this picture, which is from 1953. It was fully developed and it was a vibrant cosmopolitan neighborhood by this point, but trouble was brewing. Some of the most re repressive apartheid laws were promulgated in the 1950s, such as the Group Areas Act and the Population Registration Act. In 1966, the government declared District 6 a whites-only area under the Group Areas Act, with the removal starting in 1968. In this image, you can see that most of District 6 is intact, apart from this section here, where my cursor is, which shows where some of the first demolitions and forced removals happened. By the late 1970s, the destruction and demolition of District 6 was in full effect. You can see that many of the buildings in the western section are all gone. This is all uh, rubble by this point. You can see there's nothing there. And in 1983, the full force of the destruction can be observed. District 6 was demolished, and by this time, more than 60,000 people were forcibly removed. By the 1990s, District 6 looked totally different. The landscape was dominated by the Cape Technicon, which are these buildings here, which was a whites only university in the middle of the site, surrounded by barren land. In the early 2000s, Cape Technicon would become the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, or CPUT, which was the institution that I joined as a new academic in geomatics. Here is what the site looks like today. The large tracts of undeveloped land are now starting to be built on. You can 
can see here is a new, new housing development. And some of the old District 6s uh, are being returned, but it's, it is a highly contested site. Today, the site sits largely unreconstructed and its legacy and future remains deeply contested. Over the past six months alone, District 6 has been mired in controversies over redevelopment planning, city evictions of the homeless, restitution and resettlement for ex-residents. And increasingly realized fears that many returning claimants will pass away before securing one of the district's new newly constructed homes. So as a needed decolonizing pedagogy in engineering education, what I did was I, I attempted to conscientize students uh, at CPUT to the social, political, historical aspects of the site that the, universe, that the university was situated on. I developed a methodology called counter survey, which involves, which involves using surveying and mapping techniques to find and mark the locations of sites that no longer physically exist. Shown here is one of uh, the first counter surveys that I did, which was for the benefit of Linda Fortune, an ex District 6 resident who wrote this book called The House in Tyne Street. One of my students that's him at the bottom left there uh, calculated and marked out the location of her house, which was demolished. In the main picture, uh, you can see Linda, this is her in the white. Um, walking through the ghost of her house with one of her family members. And I marked out the location of the house with flags. You can see the, flag, the four flags there. It was a powerful moving experience for us all. Counter serving takes seriously the scientific method of geomatics, but applies it in new ways that challenges the silencing and erasure of black people. Uh, so our first efforts in 2018 were an interdisciplinary effort to join geomatics, archiving, and storytelling. At an early planning meeting, we decided to integrate baptismal records from St. Mark's Church, one of the few remaining historical structures in District 6, Sadiq's GIS mapping work, which included plotting all known addresses, and the memories and personal archives of still living ex-resident parishioners. The baptismal records date from the late 1800s and are a potent symbol and source of District 6's heritage. We extracted details on around 200 baptisms from 1950 to 1958 and located them on the GIS map. We wanted to virtually reconstruct aspects of District 6 in terms of the lost built environment and the stories of still living ex-residents and their experiences before, during, and after demolition. In 2019, we built upon this work with the District 6 Museum. We strengthened the oral histories and identified and applauded key landmarks on the GIS map. The District 6 Museum provided primary sources for 29 landmarks, eight social centers, a hospital, nine places of worship, seven schools, and four cinemas slash bioscopes. Uh, we integrated all this information onto the museum's website as an online interactive multimedia experience. And I'll put the link in the chat after. And uh, Sadiq also produced a 21 minute video providing vivid evidence of the fruits of joining geomatics and archiving to tell the story of a race past. And I'll put that link, I'll put that in the chat too as well. So up until recently, I've been taking groups of people on walks of District 6. Um, I combine maps and old photographs on the walk. Um, on, on the right picture is a group standing in front of the Moravian Chapel, which was one of the few buildings that survived the apartheid demolitions. And uh, someone is holding up a picture, an old photograph of what it looked like pre-demolition. So now, 2021 to the present, we now believe that the current analog version of the walking tour can be exper experientially enriched with thoughtful incorporation of content from our previous efforts and incorporating augmented reality technologies. Users will be directed to the precise locations of important demolished sites in District 6 and be shown what used to exist at that location through stories, superimposed archival images, documents, videos, and sound clips. 
AR will enable walking tour participants to immerse themselves simultaneously in both the contemporary and historically erased landscape. We have ideated and started building the user experience for a virtual interactive 2.5 kilometer walking loop and how it will manifest as historical narratives, stories, and locational positioning. One key challenge has been identifying and evaluating the trade-offs and affordances of alternative AR platforms and software given due consideration of the constraints facing prospective users, device requirements, operating system, navigation, data usage, and realizing our vision. We want the user to be able to take a guided, a self-guided tour or be part of a larger group. After carefully reviewing nine alternative possibilities, we are currently using Unity 3D as our AR authoring environment, AR plus GPS SDK for locations, and Mapbox for current maps and navigation. These will allow us to integrate GIS maps, develop an intuitive user interface, and activate the user's the user device's GPS for navigation and their camera for transposing historical photographs onto the contemporary landscape. Parallel to the AR effort, project staff are modifying the current analog version of the walking tour by developing a curated digital repository of existing and new archival and other supporting primary source materials. One of the points that will be visited